السلام علیکم In our series of lecture, we are on a topic of uh, balancing. So we have done a couple of examples in our last lecture regarding analysis for unbalance. So we have done from the same book, Theory of Machines and Mechanisms. Uh, and previously we have done examples 15.1, 2 and 3. So in 15.3, there were two parts basically. So one was about finding the uh, the magnitude and orientation of the bearing reactions at A and B. So bearing reactions, when we say that, so the bearing reactions at A and B, and then magnitude and location of correcting or balance balancing mass to be added at radius of 0 0.25. So the, the, the respective radius respective mass which can correct that unbalance we also investigated that so uh, now we are moving on couple of problems further problems so um, yeah so this will give you a little bit more idea how to solve uh, unbalance in the system so determine uh, so this is a problem 15.1 uh, determine the bearing reactions at a and b for the system illustrated here. So A and B, so we need to find out what the reaction, bearing reaction forces. If speed is 350 revolutions per minute, also determine the magnitude and angular orientation of the balancing mass if it's located at a radius of 50 mm. <clears throat> so first of all, I will just again emphasize on the geometry so you get a better understanding so normally you got a shaft. This is one of the shafts. So where you have A and B, the bearings. So shaft is always supported by the bearings, which are at each end. And this shaft has some system of masses. For example, in this particular example, let's say we got one of the pulley sitting on here. So it's like circular pulley. And within that circular pulley, we got some extra masses. So that extra masses are basically M1, M2, M3. So if you look from the front, the way it is, it is shown in this image, A and B. And uh, so all these masses, because pulley will look like a straight line and it has all three masses look like just in a straight one line. But if you see from the side, let's say from this side or else from this side, it doesn't matter. So you see these masses which were in one line, they are not actually. So they are in X, Y plane. So they are scattered basically. So this circular pulley, so if, the way I was explaining, let's say this is one of the circular pulley and it has some, some combination of masses over here, over here. So you can just imagine these masses could be uh, some additional fastening basically has been applied over here. So this is like extra mass. And this has been uh, scattered in XY plane. So again, if you look from the front, they all will be in one plane. So in one line basically. And uh, the other important thing which I told you in, in previous examples when we were solving, we really need to understand where x y and z axis are so x axis is being in this direction positive y axis being this direction positive and z direction being this direction so towards b basically and then we also got the radius for each mass so r1 value which is given 25 millimeter r2 so this is from the center so this is 35 millimeter r3 which is the 40 millimeter the masses are given for m1 m2 and m3 then what is the unknown here that we need to work out? First of all, uh, FA and FB. So you need to have some FA and FB. You just imagine if let's say this was one of the beam problems, simply spotted beam problem. So you had the mass sitting over here. It would have applied downward this, this load and you can find out the reaction forces at the spot. 
that's what you have done in the in the in the static basically analysis of beams but here because the shaft is rotating so this this masses the each of these three masses are causing the inertial force so if that's inertial force the the bearing on each one is not like a simply supported case it's more like the the direction of force is is quite different the way it is which is being shown here so that's why this is a little bit of additional complexity rather than just a simply support beam. So you will work out what are the reaction forces. That's the first step. Second step, you want to get rid of the unbalance in the system. And that unbalance in the system can be avoided by, by in doing the analysis, by finding what is the unbalance, total unbalance, and then proposing what's the mass you can apply. And one more restriction is basically, is the it is located at the 50 mm radius so this is one of the restriction you have to follow so the mass for example here r1 r2 r3 they are 25 35 40 the r4 the correction rc basically must be 50 mm so this is one of the restriction because this uh, will define how much mass we need to apply yeah so we need to follow this uh, restriction as well All right, let's get to the solution. There are some of the common steps here. So some of the steps are common. So very first thing is you have the rotational speed in revolutions per minute you need to convert into radians per second which is very simple 2 pi by 60 yeah so you can you can convert directly this this omega then finding the inertia forces f1 f2 and f3 they are relatively very simple by just using this formula m1 r1 omega square so you can work out what's in the newton so just be careful the units so that's the unit the 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 newton uh, three forces are known now you need to write these forces in a vector form so this is the next step now so you see that the procedure is being followed in a very simple way throughout this chapter in theory of machine and mechanism by shigley so we'll, we'll use that that approach so you write f1 which is 67 67.168 newton so that's that's this one and where it's been applied this is shown over here this is at 90 degree again we are using a reference axis as 90 degree from x onward is a 90 degree yeah m1 so now from here you can also guess where the second force would be f2 so this is f2 so you can imagine from positive x-axis all the way from here this is the angle right so you can you can see this is 180 plus 15 so that's why 70 which is the second load yeah so this has angle as i said you can write 180 plus 15 yeah so this will be 195 and you know in trigonometric functions if the sum is 360 then you can use in the negative so he is actually writing this one angle from here till this point so this is uh, this is like uh, 180 minus so you, you just imagine if you measure from the opposite side so you will have from here to here is 180 minus this 15 degree is 165 but you need to write negative 165 and i'm quite sure you will well aware uh, if you're finding the trigonometric functions the values would be similar if you find for 195 or you find for minus 165. So it doesn't matter. You can use any of those. Uh, I, I rather like to be more consistent. So uh, but, but, but it, it, it is absolutely right if you write minus 165 or you write 195. So positive from positive x axis, most of the books, they follow this convention, uh, but both are accurate. So you don't need to worry about that. Then you have F3, which is the 161, which is this force, the last th third force, and it has minus 75, which is straightforward from here. 
But if let's say again you want to follow, you have to go all the way over here. So you can write this one minus 75 as a 360 minus minus 75. So we will have around 285. 285. So when you are you want to find cosine, sine, tan, either of minus 75 or either of 285, they would be same value. So it, it doesn't matter. All right, so this is the forces. These three forces are now known uh, in a vector form. This has just J component, this one as a I and J. Yeah, so this one I will just explain again just for your convenience. So how to find from this point to this point is basically as I explained, so you got a magnitude and angle. So two things are, are, are known. So the magnitude is 70.5 to 7. By Pythagoras theorem, it should be equal to x square plus y square. And then tan of angle between x and y, tan of this angle. If I write minus 165, this should be equal to y over x. Right, so from here, for example, you evaluate what is a 10 minus 165. You, you just, just rearrange this equation. Y is equal to some value of X and then plug back over here. So you can easily find out what's the value of Y and then you come back here and then you can find value of X. So again, I will repeat. So X and Y, whatever value you find, you just need to make sure you donate the right value because that's important because the vector positive negative makes quite a lot of difference. So for example, uh, when I look at mass two, so this is along minus X. So X is minus this direction. And if I draw this one negative, so this has another component in this direction, which is minus. So this is negative, this is negative. So both are negatives. You look, so I component is negative and Y component is negative as well. So J is negative. But when, when we talk about mass three, so it has the Y component negative, so which is downward because Y is positive upward and the other component in positive X direction. So that's why it has positive X axis and negative Y axis. Yeah, so from here you can find out what's the, what is the net resultant force caused by these all forces? So you have F1, F2, F3. So that's very easy because you just add I with I and J with J component and that that's what you will have. So minus 68 plus 41, you will have minus 26 and 67 minus 18 minus 155, you will have minus 106.79. All right, so next step is we want to find out reaction forces at A and B. So the steps are relatively simple and this makes our life a little easy when we talk about just one plane motion. So for example, the moment at A, so we, we, we find the moment at A and the distance from here is a positive distance. So this is 200 this millimeter, so that's why we are using 0.2 in meter, right? So which is, this is in K direction, so Z is K. And then you multiply with the net resultant force. That's what we have determined. So that's the net resultant force caused by all the masses over here, right? So that's the moment at A plus FB. FB, so from here to here, the distance, this one, so you can find out that that distance is 800 plus 200 is 1000, 1000 millimeter is one meter. So that's what we have, one is X. So, and then you multiply with FB. Yeah, so then you solve this equation as I explained earlier. So basically you like rearrange the equation. So you bring this FB back over here and then just compare compare the 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 compare the ijk magnitudes so that you have the value so here the the, the sum of the steps are missing basically so this one needs to be written in a vector form 
what is the vector form? So this, this is the vector form. You need to write this one, this one over here, right? So this one is needs to be written here in a vector form. So once it's written, then what you need to do is basically you multiply this K with those components, which are I and J. And from I and J, you can work out what will be your like. Uh, because when K is multiplied with I, it will become J. When K is multiplied with J, it will become I. So uh, the cross multiplication, as I said, you need to revisit some of those those uh, parameters so to get a better idea. And that's it basically. So you can work out uh, the magnitude of the parameters for FB quite straight away from here. And then uh, FB will be determined in a vector form then from vector form, you will write this in this form, magnitude and angle. So you need to work out the angle as well. So I will just go briefly go back to, to show you what are the intermediate steps actually. So yeah, when you take moment, for example, so in one of the example, you, you take the moment and then you find out this way. So you see this one, is brought to this side, for example, and the rest of vector is this direction. So you need to have this FB such a way you will have uh, these numbers basically, right? So from here, he found the FB vector. From FB vector, you need to work out what's the magnitude and then what's the angle actually. So these, this is this is the detailed steps in example 15.3, which is not uh, the exact steps have been followed. So this is MA, from here you work out what's FB. Right, and now the FA part. <coughs> so FA basically is uh, so to work out FA, you need to take moment at yeah. So one of those should be so if this is moment FMA, uh, then you get FB when moment at B. So this must be B. So moment at B. So you find moment at B and now, yeah, so this is the distance. So we are going backwards. So that's it's a negative. So minus 800 and this the resultant force, not the individual force. Just make sure you use this resultant force. This is the resultant force. So you can literally do the individual forces together or you can just use the resultant force. Again, this one is shown as a as a different form, but you need to write in a vector form. And then minus because this again, this angle, is, this, this displacement is negative and then you need to work out what say FA. So FA is causing also some moment across B. So you work out in vector form and then in the vector form, you write this one basically, right? So now what you have, you have the first part of the question, the one, the one asked is about, you need to find out the reaction forces at A and B if the speed is this one. Now the second step. Second step is this, determine the magnitude angular orientation of the balancing mass if it is located at radius 50 mm. So the next step is basically you need to find out what's the correcting correction force. It is obvious because the correction force, what is correction force? So F1, we have used this equation in one of the example. F1 plus F2 plus F3 plus correction mass should be equal to zero. This is the situation which will cause a balance in the system. So some of these forces we have already determined, which is this one, F1 plus F2 plus F3, which is this one, which is 110 if you write in form of magnitude and angle. So that's what he's doing. So FC is basically what you do. If you bring all this summation of forces over this one, so this will be negative. So correction force is basically negative of this one. So you got the value. So that's it basically. You find out the vector form and uh, yeah, so you will have the vector form and you will have the angle as well. You can just work out. So you will, let's say you will have some I and J values. From there, you will find out theta, which is basically 10 inverse uh, of Y and X, Y over X basically, yeah. So from here, you will find out the 76.1. So you determine that angle. So you have the force and once the force is known, you plug. So this is the equation for inertia. 
So MC is unknown. RC is given, as I said here. So RC is given 50 mm. And uh, then you have the omega sphere. So that's already been evaluated. So you work out what will be the. Uh, yeah, so you plug that equal to uh, the the correction force, which is 110. So that's that's the correction force. And then you have the MC. You can work out in the equation and then find out what will be the mass. Right. So that's 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 why it's important to keep homogeneous units so that in the final answer you can easily find out it's a 1.638 kilogram and this angle is basically the orientation that's that what we have done actually yeah all right so similarly we have another example i will just quickly go this time uh, from the problems so this is 15.2 so this is also similar question uh, so what it says in the figure illustrate three weights connected to a shaft that rotates in the bearing a and b so again same way a and b determine the magnitude of the bearing reaction if the shaft speed is 350 revolutions per minute a counterweight is to be located at the radius of three so this is correction radius which is the last time was 50 mm this time is 250 mm uh, that's given so find the value of the weight and the angular orientation so you see this is the typical question format for unbalanced analysis and this is most probably you have done similar in your labs as well where you have system of masses rotating some certain speed and uh, you need to work out where the mass must be applied at some certain distance basically so so that's a typical uh, style of equation questions for the unbalance the other other parameters are all given so you already got this uh, this distance 190 this is 300 and you have the radius for each one and uh, then you have the weights yeah, so here instead of masses, the weights are given. Yeah, and also you need to work out the weight rather than mass this time. So this is a weight. So that's a slightly different here. All right, so we go with a similar way. Uh, I don't need to repeat because this uh, I have explained quite well. So you got like the bearings, all masses in one plane. And then you got like if you look from the side, from the side view, see these masses at different uh, orientation uh, um, you probably will do some uh, on campus psychomotor experiments where you do the unbalanced uh, analysis within unbalanced you will definitely calculate you you will have some some kind of like pulley system where you will try to to attach masses at different positions so that you can have you can control the unbalance in the system basically All right, so again, the steps are similar. I will just quickly go over those steps. So first step is basically you convert the rotational speed to standard units of radius per second. Then you have the forces, which are basically F1, F2, and F3. So these are the forces here we have. Uh, the inertia forces because of each individual mass and you see we, what we need, we need the mass and R and then W. Just be careful, we have a mass, not a weight. So M1 is 0 0.566 Newton. So that's why we have divided this with the number uh, so that we can convert in a physical unit. So best would be, I would say, instead of this conversion, because this might not be feasible to remember, so you convert this into kilogram, which is very simple, like 0 0.556 divided by 9.81. So whatever mass you get, just use that mass. 
and also this 200 millimeter rather than that you use 0.2 meter then that's that's it you don't need this conversion basically this conversion factor you don't need and uh, you will certainly have this value so f1 f2 f3 from each weights are determined then you write those in the form of vector that was always been next step for example f1 is just in in this direction uh, so it has 90 degree so you use that 90 positive x-axis so this is 90 degree the second mass so from positive x-axis this is the angle if you consider the negative so this one so from the it, it is shown negative so so you got uh, 180 minus 45 is a minus 135 right and then you got f3 which is minus 30 degree which is like straight away from here this, this is negative direction right so from positive x-axis you you can go clockwise or anti-clockwise so if you go anti-clockwise this is the positive angle if you have to go anti-clockwise sorry clockwise so don't worry clockwise in that case it's a, it's a negative values all right then again those steps where if the magnitude and angle are given you can work out what will be the uh, respective vector form so you construct a vector form and then from using all these three you can find out what's the unit what, what, what's the total force unbalance so total unbalanced force is f1 plus f2 plus f3 so you work out that that forces as well then uh, you can write in this style how it's just like 2.767 square plus 5.544 square under root that will give you the magnitude and then angle is basically the 63.5 you can work out theta is equal to uh, 10 of 10 of x y over x basically right so this this for example this value will come up some some big number but uh, uh, when you see this minus 63.5 what does this mean this is somewhere over here so this is minus 63.5 for example you if you use these values you will find out the value of angle would be this one so you will find out this angle basically or else this angle you can find directly as well so it's the same thing basically you you can you can write in the same way either it is a positive so it's positive it will be around like if you take it out of 360 so it will be 297 for example um, to 296.5 and otherwise it, you can write minus 63.5 all right so summation of forces are done then we need the reaction forces uh, yeah so first step was uh, connected a short rotating bearing at AB determine the magnitude of bearing reaction if the short speed yeah so you need definitely need bearing reactions but here he's doing other uh, so so he's doing other way around so <clears throat> this must be one of the step earlier so bearing reactions what you do you find the moment at A so moment at A is basically 450 millimeter which is k distance into fb so if you take moment at a so 450 is the summation of all the forces uh, no sorry that's the distance so you got fa which is 450 which is this distance plus this distance so you sum together you have 450 millimeter into fb so that's the fb right so this is fb and total distance is this one this is 450 millimeter and plus 300 millimeter k which is this one of this resultant force this resultant force is summation of force which is already been determined which is uh, this one 6.198 right so you plug it the steps are missing over here because you have done a couple of times and lost problems as well so you can work out this value fb and of course the 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 once you have this force in a in a vector form or oh sorry this fb in a vector form so you have fb in a vector form from there vector form you can work out what's the magnitude and what's the angle both you can determine okay so same way you find out moment at b and because we, the distance is negative so that's why minus 450 so total distance is this direction displacement so that's why minus 450 into fa and minus 150 into f summation of f right 
So uh, from here, same way, you can work out what is summation of forces in, in A as well. And again, this will be written as FA. You will find out FA in a vector form, in a vector form, which will be I and J, for example. And from here, you will work out what's the magnitude and then what's the angle. So both will be determined, evaluated by using that one. So once you find out the reaction forces, which FB and FA, the bearing reaction, now you need correction mass. Last time, as we have discussed, the total force, total force in the system, the negative of that one uh, is basically the the correction force. Again, I'm writing this equation F1 plus F2, F2 plus F3 plus FC, right? So this sum should be equal to zero. That FC is a correction mass, correcting mass. So so the sum is already been evaluated. You bring that one over here, so it will be negative. So whatever you find, 6.98, 6.198. So this was determined. The negative of that one would be the, the, the force. You don't need to confuse this one. You don't need to write this one. For example, you can just write the, 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 the this one basically. So minus 2.767 plus 5.544J will be your correction force. And then if you use that values to find out the angle, you will find out the, the magnitude and angle as well. So that's why you see there, there is a slight difference here. So you got the angle minus 63.5 here, but here angle is 116.5, right? So because we are getting towards the negative side, basically. So that's why. So that's why it's easier. One of these step is missing. You, instead of using this one, instead of using this one, you use the vector form. So you have vector form. You convert that one over here. You have the negative 2.767 plus 5.544. And then you use those that's the vector to find out angle. You will definitely have 116.5 degree. Right. And then, uh, yeah, you find out the magnitude and angle. So then you use this one, this equation. FC is equal to MCR omega square. So RC is given, which is 0 0.25 meter. So I would rather use in terms of meter. And you got uh, this value, which is 6.198. So you will work out what's the mass. So mass is 0 0.178 Newton, right? And I would rather use uh, in terms of Newton, basically, right? Rather than just uh, the, the the weight, basically, rather. Yeah, so it is actually in, the, in terms of weight, not in terms of mass yeah so he has done some conversion already so the best would be uh, don't go with with those conversions so you see this conversion is being added you don't need to do that one so you find out what's mc by using same equation fc in newton rc in meter omega so everything in a standard unit you will have the mass value in kilogram right so mass value in kilogram you need to convert that by multiplying with 9.81 with the acceleration, with the gravitational acceleration, and then you will have G value basically. Uh, you will have weight, so 0 0.178, because in the question we were being asked in terms of weight. If you see the question, what it says, find the value of the weight and it's angular. So here he didn't ask the mass, the weight, so that's why you need to answer weight basically here. And that's the angle which has been determined over here. All right, so this is 15.2. All right, so then example uh, problem 15.3. So if I will just quickly go with the question. So this question illustrates two weights. Now instead of three weights, we have two weights. So this is relatively simple problem. You know, to a rotating shaft and mounted output of bearing A and B. Now the little problem is here. The This one, the masses are attached after A and B. So that's a little different. That's that makes an interesting problem. 
So bearing A and B are here, and then you got the unbalance over here. So this is very typical example for different shaft and pulley example, basically. So here you have the bearings attached over here, A and B bearing bearings here, and then you have a pulley, for example, here, and the pulley actually is causing some unbalance, and from that uh, pulley uh, is basically like belt drive pulley, as like in cars, for example, uh, like timing belt, for example. So those those are always outward, so they don't have the other part of the shaft basically. So it's like the pulley is attached at the end of the shaft. So you got A and B bearing. That's interesting problem. So uh, mounted outward of the bearing A and B, if the shaft rotates at 150 revolutions per minute, what are the magnitudes of the bearing reactions at A and B? So same story, you need to work out what are the reaction forces at A and B. And suppose the system is to be balanced by reducing a weight at a radius 125 millimeter, right? So this is very, very interesting example. Now you want to create balance within this pulley by reducing weight. So in typical problems, we used to add weight, but now we want to eliminate weight. So this is interesting example. Why? Because the balancing can be achieved either by adding mass, either by subtracting mass. I'm quite sure you have seen some some examples, different pulleys or different applications where you got some holes in the pulley. So that hole is, of course, is a weight reduction technique so when you, you, you eliminate some mass. So this helps in balancing the system. It's a very important point. This could be asked in exam. So the balancing can be achieved either by increasing, Im implanting some mass or eliminating some mass. It could be achieved by both. Yeah. So the, 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 that's an interesting example with, with regard to that. So need, we need to work out, suppose the system is balanced by reducing a weight at radius 125, determine the amount and the angular orientation of the weight to be removed. So you do same thing. You need to work out what's the angle, what's the exact location. We need to work out where you want to remove that weight. And the the radius RC is same thing. 125 is given, so that's given. So you can you can. This is one of the restriction or limitation. You have to reduce weight within at at the point of 125 millimeter. All right. So some of the steps are same. Omega, which was in 150 revolutions per minute, you need to multiply with 2 pi by 60 to find out radius per second. Finding the inertia forces is the same because luckily we have two masses only, so that's why this F1 and F2. So we have everything. Again, this conversion is a little bit tricky being used. I would not go with that one. You rather use mass in kilograms because it's given in Newton. You convert this into kilogram, right? which is very simple divided by 9.81. And R1 is basically uh, the radius, which is given this R100 mm. So you use 0.1 meter. So if you use the physical unit, the SI units, and then this is just radians per second, you will have Newton value. You will definitely get this answer. And then F2 is the same way. You don't need to go with the conversion. And then you need to look at. So you see the shaft is just, as I said, this is just like pulley. Right, so you need to work out where the where where those those places are. In fact, the pulley would be much larger, right? So pulley is like that, for example, where you have extra mass here, extra mass over here, which is at 45 degree, and this is at 90 degree. Yeah. So F1 is basically 45 Newton, which is this one, and at angle of 90, so this angle is given, and then you got F2, which is this one which is shown minus 135, which is this angle basically. This is minus 135, right? So now, many times been explained, you can convert that into uh, vector form. So when it's 90 degrees, so it doesn't have any X component. So it's just a J. When you have F2, then you just need to convert by using same equation, many times been explained. So you got some value of I and J. So these negative signs, I told you, just be careful with these ones because this is in this quarter. 
this 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 quadrant you know in this quadrant you got this component and this component or both are x and y both are negative so you need to be careful with that one so that's f2 so you got f1 f2 then total unbalance in the system is basically f1 plus f2 very simple you just add both together and of course the i component will remain like that but j is 45 minus 36.25 which is plus 9.309 which is like this vector. So this vector can again be written in terms of magnitude and in terms of angle. How you find out Just square and some of this, these two components and, and square root, that's the magnitude and angle is basically tan theta of 9.309 divided by minus 36.25. So that will give you the angle. Yeah, just be, make sure you use this, the positive negative along with. Right. So this is the total unbalance in the in the system now. So as is been explained, what are the magnitude? So the first step we need to work out what are the magnitude of the reaction at A and B. So reaction forces are being determined in a very similar fashion. Uh, you got a moment at B. So you want to work out moment at B. So you are going negative direction. So that's why distance is negative. So minus 150, which is this distance. Minus, sorry, minus 150 is this distance, total distance. Yeah, so this total distance is minus 150. Going negative direction, so that's why. So minus 150, this one is causing a moment at B, which is this one. So you got 150 mm K along the, along the Z axis and total summation of forces. So these are in one plane. So we'll just use as a summation of forces, which is basically this one, which is which has already been determined summation of forces. And then you got 100 mm, which is the uh, this distance and the reaction force at A right reaction force at a and then this distance this particular distance right so we use that one uh, which is minus 100 mm and fa is unknown here so now you see in this example is quite good illustration so this is like the uh, i and j component which is determined from there so this is basically this one so this part is this one so you see so 150 into F, which is F is 36, 36 plus 9.309. So this 150 K multiplied by I, K into I will come a J. So that's what we have J. So when you multiply 36 into 150, you get 5430.78. And when you multiply 9.309 with 150, you get 1396. Yeah, so J into K results in I, right? So this is the vector multiplication, cross multiplication. And I told you, uh, you need to revisit a little bit your elementary knowledge uh, for the cross multiplication, especially the sign symbols. Uh, when it has to be positive, when it has to be negative. So a little bit of uh, cross multiplication of vector. Just look at some tutorials, some some online help. You will it is quite widely explained in, in open source literature. So you find that one and then you have the the hundred, which is he actually shown like that. This this is a very good example, actually. So we got 100 mm into K into. So you got F A as a two components, F A I and J. Right, so the, because this f to f a vector needs to be in x and y plane because it's not definitely not in k direction so that's why we have f i and f j so i and j component right so from here with the comparison so you bring this over this side and then you compare and uh, you just find out you just just find out what will be the vector so this is the vector basically you find out right 54.3 and in fact, of course, because in all these problems, in all these problems, we have just one component, which is one, which, which is normally K. 
So if you divide this with this number, 1396.187 with 100, you of course you get 113.959, right? So you, are, you, are, you, you, you can look at like that. And if you divide 5430 with 100, so you get 54.307. But the problem is vector deviation is not possible. It's quite well established in literature. You cannot divide a vector with a vector. So that's why the process is not like that. You divide you. What you do, you just rather multiply this I with K. You find out what will be the J component because K cross I give you J component. So you have a J component. Then you have J into K component that give you an I component and then those components are compared with these components, respective components, because this is I also I and J. So the comparison will give you what is F A and F F A X and F A Y. So you got X and Y components, right? And from here you can easily find out what are those components, what, what are the magnitude. So just find the magnitude of this vector and the angle as well, which is also very simple to so say it's a minus 14.4. So minus 14.4 means you will have some value somewhere here. So you need some mass to be attached somewhere here. So it's minus 14.5. So this is 14.4 degree. Right. So until now, the steps were quite similar. We haven't done many different things now, basically. So now, uh, so FA is being determined. This time he has calculated FB a little bit different way, but of course you can use any approach. So you can take moment at A. Instead of taking moment like you took moment at B, you can take moment at A as well or else what you can do because finding the action forces, we have used one of this equation already. So you got FA plus F1 plus F two plus F B should all be zero. So F A is determined. So if you want to find out F B, so F B must be equal to minus F A because I just brought F A back to this side. That's just a minus minus sum of both summation of both F which is also determined. So because summing up these two vectors is straightforward because we already know what is summation of forces. This is F1 plus F2 and we already know what is FA also. This, this summation of forces is easy. So you can definitely use this equation. So he found FB. So once we know FB, we can easily find out what will be the value over here, right? So you can find out magnitude and of course you can find the angle as well. Yeah, so you can find out those, those angles as well, basically. So 165. 165.6 and this is the main so 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 we you you are asked to determine fa and fb so these two components so this was the first part of the question second part we need to remove some some forces sorry some mass what is that basically this can be done a mass removal by radius 125 mm so equation is same way so now whatever the resultant force you have determined which is 37.4. So this is the one, the, this is the correction force, right? So you just use the negative value, right? If you use negative value, you need, you will have negative number. So the mass being determined as a negative number, right? Again, so FC, you just use the negative number and then RC is given, so I would suggest again you use the conventional units. So FC in Newton, RC in meter, omega is already the same units. And then you find out what is the negative mass we have. So you will you will see that the value of mass because this is given is 11.669 699 Newton. 
because he, he, he found it in Newton. So you, what you will do, you will find in kilograms and then you convert into Newton. So if you if you use this one kilogram, so it will be around 1.2 kilogram, something like that. You can exact find by calculating. Uh, so uh, 1.2 kilogram. So you have to remove this 1.2 kilogram. And uh, this is the angle which is already been given over here, so which is we, we use that 165 or which is this 165. So 165 angle is somewhere here. It's quite close to 180. And it is it is supposed to be at distance of 120 millimeters. So R1 is 100. So this is if this is 100, this is 150. So 125 somewhere here basically. And this is angle minus 14, or you can write this angle, which is uh, which is basically 165. So 165. You can write this angle, or you can write this angle. So it doesn't matter basically. So you found the removal, and you found the the orientation. All right, so then I have attached some of the extra problems for your practice. So this extra problem actually is a combination of both. So, that, so for example, this is one of the graphic analysis, uh, this problem. Uh, yeah, so this is like the second problem, which is also requires some graphic analysis. Uh, so you need to do the graphic analysis and then problem three is also graphic analysis. And then you got problem four, which is also graphic analysis, right? So I have attached four of further problems, which are very simple actually. The, if you follow the steps, you will you will follow. It is quite straightforward. So if you follow the steps, you will definitely uh, would be able to do that in a, in, a, in a very convenient way. So this is like some exercise. You have the solution as well. Just practice it. If you if you have any question, you can come back to me. But this one requires the graphic analysis, which is definitely we, we have done it already. So this one, 15.1 was, was one of the examples we have done the graphic analysis. So you use that technique to find out these values, right? All right, thank you very much.